السلام علیکم استاذ ڈو یو تھنک دیٹ پیپل ود ڈسیبلٹی ڈیزرو اسپیشل اٹینشن ہاؤ یو کین گیو دیم اسپیشل اٹینشن اور واٹ یو کین ڈو فار دیم ٹو ہیلپ دیئر ان سوسائٹی ایکچولی ان دس پارٹ آف دی ورلڈ وی تھنک ٹو تھنک لائک پیپل ہو آر ڈسیبل کین نوٹ ڈو اینی تھنگ اینڈ دے اوبیسلی ہیو ٹو بیکم بیگر دیر ان سولائز سوسائٹی ان ڈیولپ ورلڈ This before I, I give you a chance, just like we, this recently we created some uh, para, Paralympic, you know, for them to participate and be encouraged. They don't really have to stay, be like beggars in the society. They are, we can encourage them, we can let them know that they can do so many things. And we'll be seeing that in, the, in, in, in this other part of the world that people who are disabled can do a lot. If they are motivated, if they are told they can do, they will really be, get them set back to track and they can do a lot of things. We, so, we as Muslims, uh, uh, like uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, never uh, look down the, the disabled or the less privileged. So, as Muslims, we have to learn from this. We have to do as much as we can to give support to those who are disabled. It's Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, uh, make it. Any of us can be today, tomorrow we may not be. what we are today. And what do you think about the role of the government towards them? Uh, seriously, the government in most countries in the world, they are not really supportive. And these people tend to be forgotten because probably they are not being seen, they are not launching their cases. Or even when we see them practically, we ignore, we tend to ignore. Both the cities is not only the government. The leaders and the followers, we tend to neglect these disabled people. So, I'm not really apportioning blames to the government, also the citizens. But actually, the government is not doing an, enough to help the disabled people in the society. So, you think government should make the schools for ch- disabled children and yes. the good? Yes, create schools for dis- disabled people in their respective uh, proportions. For instance, deaf and dumb, there are schools for deaf and dumb. If someone is deaf and is dumb, it doesn't mean it's out of place. We can create uh, schools of this nature for them to learn. Even people don't have legs and hands, there should be schools that can help them to develop and rediscover themselves because no, no one is completely useless. Okay, thank you. Assalamu alaikum sir. Alaikum sir. Okay, today my topic is about handicapped people. Do you think that people with a disability deserve special attention? Yes and no. Why yes and no? Yes, because um, they are disabled, they don't, need, uh, they don't have the full capability or ability of the people, but at the same time, they are, uh, we don't want them to be very touchy. We might offend them and we treat them differently than normal people. What should be the rule of the government towards special people? As I said, I think that uh, what I've seen uh, in some Western countries, equal rights, uh, they shouldn't be discriminated against, and they have to make uh, uh, how many people disabled friendly people can access all what uh, the so-called ordinary people can access. Okay. How, can we utilize, how can we utilize the people, uh, special people as a normal member of society? That's by offering them equal opportunities in terms of jobs, access to education. We just treat them like anyone else and making their lives easier. Do you think the special children should get the uh, rights to study in the normal, with normal students? Normal children? Well, I don't know. It depends on the, on the school. If the school doesn't have uh, the necessary uh, access or amenities, uh, then it will be difficult for the child and very difficult for the uh, teacher as well. So the teachers need certain training and they have, uh, I don't think, uh, it depends if each case has its merits basically. If the school has all the right people, trained people, and all the amenities, otherwise it will be difficult for both, for the disabled person. And, but they should have the right, they have, should have a choice. I don't think uh, setting up a, a school just for handicapped people is a good idea. Thank you, teacher. Assalamu alaikum.
Assalamualaikum. What do you think about the handicapped people? How they should treat it with the citizen and or their society people? Yeah, they should be given some special privilege, like in education, transport, in all matters of life. Okay. What do you think about as a student? They should be able to stu they should able to st study with the normal people or no? Not of course not. They can't study with the normal people. As I told you, they need special privilege. They need special reservations. They need special infrastructure. Okay, thank you. เป็นเป็ดแล้วจะบินเป็นคนหูหนวกแล้วจะเล่นไวโอลินเธอจะบ้าเหรอทำไมไม่ไปเรียนวิชาอื่นเสียเวลาคนอื่นเขาจบไปแล้วอย่างสวยงามนะครับสำหรับผู้เข้าประกวดคนสุดท้ายของเราในวันนี้นะครับและในช่วงต่อไปก็จะเป็นช่วงของครับเรายังเหลือผู้เข้าประกวดอีกหนึ่งท่านนะครับในวันนี้เราไปพบกับเธอกันเลยครับI have no 
arms and no legs, but I'm very thankful that I have my little chicken drumstick here. People freak out when they see me for the first time. It's so cool. I was at a water slide um, all by myself. Everyone obviously at the bottom of the slide is looking up and waiting for other people to come down. And here I come and they're freaking out. They're like, you know, like this. And I was so tempted to look at myself and go, what happened? You know? There were times where I sort of looked at my life and thinking, well, I can't do this and I can't do that. And you keep on concentrating on the things that you wish you had or the things that you wish you didn't have. And you sort of forget what you do have. And there's no point, I believe, in my life where I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, I wish I had arms, legs, because wishing won't help. But what I've seen in life are just a couple key principles. And the first thing that I've seen is to be thankful. It's hard to be thankful, man. I tell you, when I was eight years old, I, I sort of summed up my life and thought, I'm never going to get married. I'm, you know, I'm not going to have a job. I'm not going to have a life of purpose. What kind of a husband am, am I going to be if I can't even hold my wife's hand? It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. Oh boy. Woo! It's freezing, I can't feel my hands. <laughs> I love life. You know, so many people come and say, how come you smile so much? And I'm like, well, it's, it's, it's a long story. <laughs> but it's very simple at the same time. You see, it's very hard to smile sometimes in life. There are things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand and you don't know if you're going to get through it. You know, you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long this storm is going to be. And today I want to share with you some principles that I've learned in my life that you can use in yours. Being patient is beautiful. I, I tell you, it's the hardest thing. But I realize I may not have hands to hold my wife's hand. But when the time comes, I'll be able to hold her heart. I don't need hands to hold her heart. You know, it is scary to know how many girls have eating disorders. It is scary to know how many people are just angry at life because of their situation at home and angry at others. It's scary to know how many people actually feel like they're worth nothing. Every single girl right here, right now, I want you to know that you are beautiful. You are gorgeous just the way you are. And you boys, you're the man. <laughs> On this DVD, I share my experiences in life of how I've overcome challenges and seen a new, fresh perspective in life. To be thankful, to dream big, and to never give up. I speak to children, youth, and adults about key issues and principles that I've applied in my life that has given me the strength to conquer all that comes before me.